Well, I'm so glad that you've joined us here this morning to celebrate our Savior, Jesus Christ, with us. It is his birth that gives us hope and peace with God. And uh, today, as we gather as a church, or wherever you're watching from, uh, online, in your home, um, or whether you just caught this stream somewhere on the internet, we want to just welcome you to our Christmas celebration here as a church. If you've uh, been a part of our services before, you'll know that over the last three weeks, we have been remembering the three gifts that were given to Jesus by the wise men. Now, we don't actually know how many wise men there were, but we know that they offered a gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And those gifts, um, gold was valuable in and of itself, and it represented the kingly nature of Jesus, that he was born to be the king of kings. Frankincense was offered by these priests themselves, and they recognized that the once for all priest had come, who would sacrifice himself as the better high priest, offering a sacrifice for sin to God. Now the third gift that they offered was the gift of myrrh. And if you uh, were with us that week that we studied it, you'll, you'll remember that that was kind of a, a weird gift because this was embalming fluid, basically. Uh, you know, an oil that, that was extracted from, from myrrh as it, it was crushed. And it represented Jesus as the suffering servant or as the Lamb of God, the one who had been born to die as a sacrifice for sin. So each of these gifts that these wise men offered, gold and frankincense and myrrh, were incredibly practical, but also valuable and deeply symbolic about what Jesus had come to do and had come to become for us. And so today as we celebrate Christmas, what we want to do is, is I want to tell you about a fourth gift that the wise men gave to Jesus that day. It says in Matthew chapter 2, verse 10, that when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Now, whenever the Bible says this, it doesn't mean that when the wise men came and saw the star, it doesn't mean that they just cracked a smile. No, what it means is that they jumped, they cheered, woo! You know, they celebrated that they had found this star that was gonna lead them to the Messiah, to Jesus, and to the place of his birth. As the passage goes on, it says as they were rejoicing, verse 11 says, and going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they fell down and worshiped him. Now here, here's what I want you to see. I want you to see two things in this passage that caused the wise men to then do two things. Two things that they did is they saw the star and it caused them to rejoice. They then saw the child and it led them to worship. That's what it led them to do. And I want you to draw your attention to these two things because I believe that there's a response that we need to offer to Jesus this Christmas and some questions that we need to ask ourselves every time that we celebrate Christmas. The two questions are these. What should my response to Christmas and to Jesus be? And number two, what gift should I give to him? Let's talk about that first question right off the bat. What should my response to Christmas be? I know for, for many of you, Christmas is a difficult season, but can I just offer a word of advice? You can make a decision today to choose joy. Choose joy because the person, the joy maker, the Jesus has come into the world to change your circumstances. Now, you may be going through something really, really difficult. You may be going through something really dark. You may have experienced a loss this year. You, you may not have someone at, at your dinner table this Christmas that you may be feeling a loss about. But can I just tell you, knowing Jesus gives you hope for eternity and gives you joy and peace with God. A joy that passes all understanding, it does. Can I tell you, 
that knowing Jesus has given me more joy than any earthly experience has ever given me. And you can choose that joy by receiving Jesus as your Savior, receiving the assurance that he brought to this world, that he came to be the one who came to die for sin, to be the one who would give you his righteousness and bring you back into relationship with God. You can have peace. You can have joy this Christmas as you choose to respond to Jesus in that way. I don't know what kind of difficulty you're going through. I don't know what it is, but can I just tell you, you can have joy this Christmas as you choose to come before Jesus, put your trust in him, and believe in his sacrifice on the cross for you. Put your, put your trust in him. Second question is this, is then what gift should I bring? What gift should I bring? Now, we recognize Christmas is the season of giving and receiving gifts. And as you give and receive gifts today, or as, as you've done so in this season, can I, can I give you just a, a little, point you toward a fourth gift that I believe that the wise men gave? I believe that the fourth gift that the wise men gave to Jesus was the gift of worship. They gave him gold. They gave him frankincense. They gave him myrrh. And it says as they bowed down and, and offered their gifts, they worshiped him. You're recognizing that, that in the text. Now, I want you to also notice who they were worshiping specifically. They were not just worshiping God, generically. They weren't worshiping a higher power. They weren't worshiping a, a great spirit. No, they were worshiping Jesus specifically. Here's a few things that, that I want you to know about worship. First thing is, is, is really this, what, what is worship? Worship is our response. It's a response to what we give in response to what we have received and what we've received is Jesus Christ. Worship is a response. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an expression of, of worth. You, you, could, you could also call it worth-ship. And the first thing that we see that, that about worship here is that worship is costly. Worship is costly. You'll notice these magi, they gave Jesus gifts. And these were not cheap gifts either. These weren't just gifts that, that, that they got at the dollar store. No, no, they, they, they worship by giving sacrificially. It would have taken a lot of time. It would have taken a lot of money. It would have taken a lot of resources to fund a long trip to go and search for the king of kings. And, uh, you know, then, then they brought these gifts, expensive gifts, gifts of gold, gifts of frankincense, gifts of myrrh to Jesus. And so as you give and as, as you receive these gifts today, I want you to just, just remember back to what gifts these wise men gave. These gifts were costly. They sacrificed things for them. You know, I'll, I'll tell you something that I'll never forget. Back when I, I used to be a worship pastor and would lead, would lead singing on Sundays, I remember someone coming up to me after a service one Sunday and saying, Jonathan, it's often times that after we sing, you tell us to sit down and you say, thank you for worshiping with us. And then we go into the offering. Jonathan, by, by you saying thank you for worshiping with us makes me think that the worship is ended. But to me, I worship through my giving. Part of my, my, my worship is my giving, sacrificially and willingly with joy. And when you say that that's not worship, you rob me of that, the joy of, of worshiping God in that way. I'll tell you, I never, I never forgot about that. It was a beautiful thing to understand. And what I, what I will let you know th this morning is this, that Jesus will never ask you to do what he himself has not already done perfectly for you. Doesn't it say in scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. God himself gave us the greatest gift ever given his own son, Jesus Christ. And we recognize that greatest gift given to us this Christmas. True worship is costly. And the response of the Magi was to give to Jesus costly gifts. And our response, I believe, to Jesus is that we ourselves should give. The second response that I, I, I believe that we need to give to, to Jesus is this, is that in our worship, we need to humble ourselves. True worship is second, it's not only costly, it's humbling, it's humbling. Look at what the wise men did. It says, when the Magi had come to the house, they found Jesus and they fell down and they worshiped him. The Magi, they fell down. Now, these were respected, influential, dignified men. <laughs> these, were, these were the king makers of the known world at that time and now they are bowing down to him. Why? It's because they knew their place. That in the presence of the king of kings, they knew that their place was to bow. True worship is costly. True worship is humbling. And can I ask you today, as you celebrate Christmas, are you humble that the King of Kings would come down to this world, be born as a human, experience everything that we do, was tempted and yet was without sin, and then gave his life as the Lamb of God and died on the cross for you, for your sin, and he didn't stay dead, he rose again from the dead, proving his power. Are you humble? that you have a God who would love you that much. Can I ask you, how will you respond to him this Christmas? Will you respond with rejoicing? Will you respond with your giving of yourself, of your time, of your talents, of your treasure, all to seek, serve, and send, which is the mission of Valley Church. It's, it's what we're here to do, or seek, serve, and send followers of Jesus to bring hope and joy and peace. Would you give? And would you humble yourself before that King of Kings? Would you offer him all of you, all that you have, and bow down and worship him this Christmas? I want to thank you for joining us for our service today. And I am praying for you that you have an amazing Christmas this year. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your gift of your son, Jesus. As we worship you this Christmas, may we keep you as the center. And may God, we respond with rejoicing, with our giving, and God, with our humbling of ourselves before you. God, I pray that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, God, that they would reach out to you in faith and say, Lord Jesus, would you save me, a sinner? I believe that you came down to this earth, that you lived a perfect life, and you died a sinner's death as a substitute in my place. Jesus, I receive you, and I want to follow you this Christmas. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.